So when you guys do your Grant Wood drawings today, let's look at the steps it's going to take to come up with those. I'm going to use a black marker so that you can see what I'm drawing on this video, but you will be using a pencil in case you have something that you want to change. The first thing that we're going to work on drawing is our horizon line. We already looked at some of Grant Wood's pictures and we noticed that none of his horizon lines were perfectly straight. They kind of had some hills and dips and valleys. So when I do my horizon line, I'm going to make it a little bit wavy like that. So go ahead and do the wavy part on your paper now. The next thing I'm going to do is add a river. Grant Woods like to use flowing water for that calming effect. So somewhere I'm going to find a place to start on my horizon line and make my wavy river. It's going to go from really narrow and small back here at the same starting point to getting wider as it comes up to us. This wider part makes it look like it's going from close to us to far away because as things get further away from us in a landscape, they also get smaller. So go ahead and add your river in. It can flow this direction or maybe yours flows this direction on the paper. That's totally up to you. Go ahead and draw your river in now. The next thing I'm going to add in are my trees. Grant Wood liked to use trees to show us the things far away and things close up. So our trees in the distance are going to be small or big. What do you think? Tell me out loud. They're going to be small. So when we do our trees in the distance, we're going to do them kind of puffy, a little like clouds, but they're going to be small, right? He did some small trees. So this is one way to do trees, kind of like this, sort of like that. Or if you want, the other way to do trees is to do them up off the ground, and you could add in the little trunks if you wanted to. These ones are kind of like maple trees. Maybe instead you want some pine trees in the background. Those have the pointy zigzags. We talked about the different types of lines. These ones would have the zigzag lines. You might have some tall, skinny ones. Sometimes you get taller, skinny pine trees. They're gonna have the zigzags across the bottom. All right. And then maybe you want some wavy line trees. Those ones are more like oak trees have all different kinds of trees, right? So go ahead. You can start working on your trees in your background now. Then the next thing you're going to do is maybe some trees up close. And our trees up close are going to be a lot bigger because they're closer to us, right? So we might have some like this, and then we'll draw their trunk straight down. And they're going to overlap a little bit because they're closest closer to us, we'll see that overlapping. And if you ever accidentally make a mistake or you go over a section you don't want, just flip your pencil over and erase that area. That way you don't have to worry about your line showing. The next part is going to be to draw some of those different fields. Remember Grant Wood had some fields that had corn and some that had soybeans and some that maybe even have pumpkins. I'm going to draw some hills, extra hills and lines to start putting in those fields. So I might have one bump of a field here. Maybe I divide and make another bump back here. It stops when it hits my horizon line. Maybe it kind of goes this direction over here. So now I have a bunch of different areas. I'm going to start with my water first because if I have all these different sections, I can't tell the difference. They just look blank, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and let you try and draw those different sections first. Go ahead and do that now. The next thing I'm going to work on is making a difference in each of these sections so that I can tell they're different from one another. I'm going to start with my water. Water is usually a wavy line, so I'm going to do little wavy lines back here because again, if things are further away, they're going to be smaller. As I get closer, my wavy lines have to get bigger. That's right, because as things get closer to me in a landscape, they get bigger. So as I get down here, you can see I'm making my lines a lot longer. Sometimes our eyes trick us when we're looking at something and we can't quite tell the difference. Let me show you how we can tell the difference on here. If I take my marker, and I put it down next to my lines I made way back here, they're really short, right? See that one from the top of the marker to right here? That's pretty short, it's just this little white space. But if I move my marker way down here, 
That little white space on this line goes all the way down now, doesn't it? So my line's a lot longer down here than it is up here at the top. Go ahead and fill in the squiggles on your river now. Now we're gonna do a section in our field. Remember all those different types of lines we talked about earlier? We're gonna use those here. You can use zigzags, you can use swirlies, you can use any kind of line from your charts that we made earlier. So for this field, I'm gonna use swirlies first. Again, you don't have to use swirlies. I'm just showing you an example. Of course, as I start in the distance, they're tiny. And as I get closer, they get bigger, exactly. A little bit bigger each time. And maybe these ones represent pumpkins in a field for me, right? For you, they might be something else. Maybe they're bales of hay. And they don't quite fit on the edge of the page. I just do a little bit where it comes off the edge of the page over here. Go ahead and start filling in your sections with your different types of lines. So when you finish with all of your different sections of your landscape and the different types of lines, it should look something like this. Of course, yours will be in pencil. If you think your sky still looks kind of blank, if you want to put a sun up there, you can go ahead and do that at this point in time. I like to do mine with a sunset, and I like to put those same types of lines in my sun. I can also divide my sky up again into sections, just like Grant Wood likes to divide his landscapes into different sections. And back here where my stripe would go through my trees, I'm going to skip my trees so that I can make sure that sunshine stays behind my trees. This should be the end of your project today for class. We'll pick up next time with how to add color. Hi guys, welcome back. Last time we started our Grant Wood landscapes and we drew them with pencil. Today we're gonna go on top of that pencil with something called oil pastels. These are just like when you use chalk, except these kind have an oil mixed into them. When you have an oil, water doesn't like to mix with oil. So what happens is when we paint watercolors over these later, they're gonna bounce right off and stay the same color. Let's get started with adding color to our drawing. We're going to pretend that this is my pencil drawing. It's a little darker so you guys can see it, but that's okay, it'll still work the same. So the first color I wanna start with today is blue. And I'm gonna start with blue on my water. Just because it's water in art doesn't mean it has to be blue. I could really use any other color. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace that outline edge so that I know where my river goes. And I'm gonna push nice and firm, not too hard because I don't wanna break my oil pastel, but just enough that it really shows up on my paper. Now, these feel like crayons, but they're not crayons. So I'm not going to color with them. Instead, I'm going to continue tracing my lines that I drew last time on my paper, just like you guys are going to do today. Why don't you go ahead and try and fill in your river section now? When your river section's finished, it lo looks something like this. The next thing we're gonna do is start filling in all of our other sections. So change colors each time you fill in a section. Things that are further away from us tend to be lighter. Things that are closer up to us tend to be darker. So I'm gonna start with a dark green for the trees that are closer to me. Now maybe your trees aren't green. Maybe your trees are yellows and oranges and reds because it's fall in your picture. That's perfectly okay. In my picture, I'm doing a summertime one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a dark green for the front. There we go. And then I'm going to switch from a dark green to a light green because in the background, as it gets further away from me, the color gets lighter. This one's a really soft one. I think it was in somebody's warm hands before I got started today. So it's coming off super easy and it's going pretty fast. So why don't you guys go ahead and take a few minutes to do your trees. The next thing I'm gonna do is start adding colors to my fields. So over here, I think I had decided last time I was gonna make this by pumpkin field. So if things are lighter further away from us and darker closer up, I'm gonna start with using a nice deep orange for my patterns that are up here in the front. I'm gonna trace over my lines as best I can. I don't want any extras to peek through. And I'm only gonna go part way back with the bright orange because why? 
That's right, as I get further back, they have to get lighter. So what's a lighter color that's kind of like orange, but isn't orange? What would be next in our colors that would be lighter? Some of you have probably already guessed. It's gonna be yellow, right? So up here, I push hard down here. I push really light up here on these ones because now I'm gonna go back with a yellow on top of the orange to make them look like a lighter color in the background. Just some of them though, not all of them. And these ones I only do half because only half of them are towards the background, right? So now it kind of goes from a yellow down into an orange. You guys go ahead and start filling in your fields now. Be sure to change colors for each section. For example, if I move over to my next section and I'm going to do purples, I'll start with a light purple or a pink and move to a darker one. And if I have dots, I have to be careful to go over those dots. Now you'll notice where my hand's at, it's leaning on my paper. I don't want this to smudge down here. So I'm gonna get an extra sheet of paper and put that on top while I'm working so that it doesn't make a mess of my paper. And then I can keep going. See, now I can rub down here all I want and it's not gonna mess up all the stuff that I have underneath. Go ahead and keep working on your drawings now. So when you finish with your picture today, it should look something like this. You'll have all of your oil pastels put in. Perfect. Hi guys, welcome back. We're gonna start adding in our liquid watercolors now. So the first thing to do is get some of the watercolor on your brush. Pick which section you're gonna work on first and go ahead and paint. Try and keep the watercolor just in the area that you wanna make that color. As you can see, when the water goes over the oil pastels, remember what we said was gonna happen? The oils don't like the water, so they don't mix. You can see that it goes right on over those. And it might be a little harder to see because I'm doing blue on blue, but if I add another color in, like a little bit of red to blue, what color do we get if we mix red and blue together? We get purple. So I'm gonna mix those together to give my water a little bit of a purple look because it's my painting and I like purple. And as you can see where I'm painting and it's turning purple, the lines are still staying blue because they're in that oil pastel. If I wanna work on another section, I'm going to rinse my brush off in my cup of water and then I'm gonna go like this to dry my brush on the edge a little bit because I don't want it to drip too much. I'm gonna pick up the next color of liquid watercolor that I want and say this time I wanna work on the trees that I have that are green. So I'm gonna get my green and I'm gonna go over here to my trees and I'm gonna try and stay in my lines. Now one of the reasons I picked my trees is because I don't wanna to touch the section I already painted. What would happen if I painted right here? That's right, it's gonna bleed. It's gonna look kinda of really messy and ugly and I don't want that. And I want my trees to have a little bit of different color. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some yellow and I'm gonna paint just yellow on this side of my tree. I'm gonna show you guys how that works. So if I paint just yellow here, but I want it to look darker over here because my sun is here, so it's shining this way. This side of my tree is gonna be lighter. This side of my tree should be darker from the shadows. So instead on this side, I'm gonna pick up the dark green color to mix in. So now I have the lighter side of my tree facing the sun and the darker side of my tree where the shadows would be on this side. See how I'm working that in there together? So now it kind of blends together. It's a little shiny where the light's reflecting, but you can see where it's blending. That's why you have to be always careful that you're not touching sections you don't want to paint that are still wet because they'll blend like that really easily. I'm gonna come over here and do my other tree now. We're gonna go ahead and pause the video and I'm gonna let you work on a few of your sections and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about how to do the other colors that are all around here. Go ahead and try that out. Okay, I painted in all my trees and my water. Now I wanna try and do some of my fields. I don't wanna to touch sections that are already wet and since these are still wet up here, I'm not gonna work in these sections yet. I'm gonna go further down here to a section that I haven't worked in so that I make sure the colors don't bleed. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm just gonna paint straight over because remember our watercolors aren't going to mix with our oil pastels. So I could just paint right over them and see they don't change. The reds down there stay red even though I'm using an orange paint. I'm gonna go up here all the way to the top. 
Look how gorgeous that is. And it pop, the paint just pops right off of the oil pastels. It doesn't even stick on there, which is just what I want, like Grant Woods used to do. So they really show up, don't they? Now I have this section painted. Can I paint this section right next to it? No, not yet, because this is still wet. This one has already started drying. If I feel it with my hand, it feels pretty dry. It's not cold. So I think it's safe to paint here, as long as I'm careful not to paint up by my trees. So my next color that I'm gonna do back here looks like it's going to be purples. Yep, purples and pinks. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my purple color in my liquid watercolors and start back here. And I'm gonna paint that section. I'm gonna stop when I get to my next field. I don't wanna paint that the same color. I wanna paint it a different color. So I'm just gonna paint this section right here. See how the pink stays pink? Isn't that neat how the oil just resists the water like that? This is one of my favorite ways to do paintings because I can get so many colors in there. The next section I'm going to look at is way over here because this section's kind of dry. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab more of my blues and a little bit of purple back here too, I think. And paint that section in real careful and keep it just in there. Perfect, check that out. And then my light blue stayed light blue. Why don't you guys go ahead and fill in a few more sections? And then if you're not sure if they're dry or not, raise your hand in your seat and one of your teachers will come over and let you know if it's dry enough to paint carefully. So I was painting and I had a little accident right here where I went over my line. That's okay, in watercolor, you can actually pick some of it up. If you get a tissue or a paper towel and you blot it just like this right away, Look at that, how it starts coming up. It doesn't come all the way out, but it gets a lot of it out so that it looks like it's just part of my painting now instead of an accident. You can try that if it gets over in any of your other little color areas like this. I can take all those little accidents out, can't I? And that way it doesn't affect the rest of my painting. Go ahead and keep working. So I wanted to paint my sky a little bit like a sunset. So I started by adding my yellow in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of the orange and I'm gonna do the orange near the bottom, which kind of shows up under my trees, right? Even though it's part of my sky, I'm gonna throw the orange in down here, all the way across off the edge of the paper. And I'm gonna put a little bit up here while the yellow is still wet, because what that does is it lets it bleed or run into the other section, just like you would see in the regular sky. See how that kind of blends really nicely in there? And then I'm gonna make sure that my sun is a little bit darker than everything else, because sometimes when that sun gets really low on the horizon, it almost turns red, doesn't it? Like that harvest color. Once your painting's finished today, go ahead and put it on the drying rack so it's ready to sign next time you come to class.